All right, everyone. So I picked up this ThinkPad at the thrift store. It's a Lenovo T60. It has a few issues. Um, when I picked it up at the thrift store, I plugged it in and it seemed to power on fine, but I didn't notice this warning initially. I purchased it for $7. Um, it has something on it called CompuTrace. Uh, doing just a little bit of research, it said something about this being a malicious software, kind of like a ransomware. So I need to get rid of it in order to make this work. Um, it's also having an issue with keeping the clock properly. I believe the BIOS backup battery may be bad and need to be replaced. So in this video, I'm going to tear it down, uh, replace the BIOS battery, and then hopefully get this machine up and running so I can sell it. Uh, this particular laptop right now is going for somewhere around $100 used on eBay. Um, once I'm done with it, I could say that it's partially refurbished. Uh, the battery's no good on it. Battery's definitely going to need to be replaced. That's not something that I'll pay for to get replaced. I'll leave that up to the buyer to decide, you know, if they want a new battery and, and what the cost is going to be for that. So let's get into it. All right, so. I've never taken apart this particular model, so I don't know too much about it. Um, but they're pretty self-explanatory to take apart. Um, the Lenovo's and the old IBM's, they had symbols where the screws are just to kind of give you an idea of what they're for. Um, there's a keyboard icon, a memory icon, hard drive icon. So you can kind of understand which screws go where. Uh, most laptops, they have screws under the keyboard, so the keyboard's got to come out first before you can take the shell apart. Uh, but we'll just start with all of this. I've got a piece of tape over here to keep the screws on so I don't lose track of them and where the track of the screws, um, they get lost pretty easily. Um, obviously the magnet on my screwdriver is not the greatest. Now, you really shouldn't be using a magnetic screwdriver for this type of thing, um, just because you can harm parts, uh, but it's not a bad, it's not too bad. So here's the hard drive caddy. Um, this is a new enough laptop that it has a SATA connection. I believe that's why this particular one is still selling pretty good, uh, just because that means it's slightly upgradable you'd get a bigger hard drive you could use an ssd in it it'd be a good starter laptop for maybe a student uh, someone working on a budget something like that now i'm just going to take all the screws out all the way around and then I'll get the keyboard, and then we'll see where we need to go from there. These are some long bastards. In a couple of previous jobs that I had, I worked with Lenovo laptops, and they're really great laptops. They're super tough, durable, uh, they run great, uh, which is probably why this is still a desirable machine. I kind of like to go clockwise when I take a laptop apart, just because it kind of makes things easier. I stick the screws down to the tape, Kind of in the same arrangement that I unscrew them. It gives me an idea of where to put them back when I'm done. Um, working on things like this, you definitely want to keep track because there's so many little screws to get lost. I believe I can leave these ones actually. They look to be connected to the motherboard. So I'll leave them for now.
Now I'm assuming with this machine that the, the memory is gonna be underneath the keyboard. Uh, they did that so you didn't have to take the entire thing apart. Some of the newer laptops, they'll have an access point. Even some of the older ones have an access place to more easily get to the memory to upgrade it. Um, but because these machines are more focused towards uh, selling to you know, large businesses, offices, that sort of thing, I didn't really worry too much about that. Just because, you know, if it needed an upgrade, usually they would just buy a whole new machine. It's not the best screwdriver, but it'll do. We are in. Okay. A little cable there for the fingerprint scanner and the trackpad. Simple enough. Keyboard just lifts. Another zip cable under there for that. A little hard to get a grip on it. go. We got the keyboard. We are in like Flynn. So here is our BIOS battery. That is going to be one of my troubles. Now I've never replaced a BIOS battery, to be honest. Uh, so this will be my first time replacing one. And I'm not entirely sure looks like it's just a 2032 but I think rather than trying to take this apart and put a 2032 in here I think I'll just buy one 
Um, I'm sure I can get them online just like that. Just look up the model number and look up the part number. It's got an IBM part number right there. And just to order one up real quick to put in there. Now it looks like this particular one has two slots for memory. Only one of them is populated. Um, looks like we've got Kingston. I'm assuming it's a one gigabyte. So it's not really telling me. Um, usually double sided it means one gigabyte with these older machines. Um, I might have some more lying around that I could put in here. I'll look into that and see and then uh, go from there. Just kind of looking over it. It doesn't look too dirty or dusty. It seems to be in pretty decent condition. It doesn't look like it's been abused in any way. It seems to be in really good, really good condition. So yeah, we'll uh We'll go look for this BIOS battery, um, get a replacement, put it in, and then I will work on removing the malware that's on it. Um, just from the little bit of reading, it looks like I might have to flash the BIOS. Uh, that's something I haven't done in a very long time, so I'm going to need to kind of do a little research on that and see how to get it and how to do it properly. Uh, once I flash the BIOS, I should be able to wipe it, reinstall Windows, and move forward from there. Um, but yeah, it should be good. So I will be taking care of that. Uh, yeah. Keep an eye out because that will be the next video. I'll uh, walk through that process. I'll walk through, you know, put the battery back in, put it back together, flash the BIOS, reinstall Windows. I believe I have a copy of XP Pro somewhere lying around. The code on this should work fine with that disk. And then uh, we'll get it back up and running in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Um, let me know if you have any suggestions. Let me know uh, what you think. And uh, yeah, if you, if you like this video, give it a like. Uh, follow me if you want to see more. I'm going to be uploading a lot more videos in the future. Uh, I'm going to try to do something at least once a week. Uh, just random stuff, mostly having to do with my flipping uh, from my thrift store finds. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out on that.